Google Drive 2023, what's new? 2023 has seen lots of changes in Google Drive. Some subtle, some not so subtle. Let's take a moment to take a look through some of the big updates from this year. May opened with a small update which added additional sort functionality to folders in both lists and grid view. As a default, folders in Google Drive will sit at the top of the interface, sorted by the selected criteria. Underneath the folder structure, individual files will appear as a group, also sorted by the selected criteria. Of course, existing functionality in grid or list view allows for sorting by file or folder name, by files last modified, files that I've modified, or files that I've opened recently. Now, from the hot dog menu on the right hand side, we can choose to sort files and folders together or to retain the upper folder structure. If a user chooses the mixed option, the selected sort criteria will apply to both files and folders equally and the view will be mixed. I'm happy to see this small update. It gives more personal customization within Drive for those that want to use it. Next, another simple but elegant function update, the access request indicator. Have you been in a meeting and shared a file to a group only to realize when you see access request emails afterwards that some collaborators were unable to see the file? Have you had a file request get so lost in a glut of emails that you only find it many days after the work is complete? This update allows the user to address access requests directly in the file. If a file has a pending access request, an indicator will appear on the share button. Clicking the button will open the familiar share pop-up, but a banner across the top will show any pending requests. Clicking review will take the user to a list of requests. Here they can see the notation from the requester and set correct permission levels. The functionality is available to add a custom notification or to simply grant or decline permissions. As each permission is addressed, the next request appears until none remain and the user is returned to the normal share pop-up. Recently, the file and folders option menus have had a reshuffle. This is more controversial than some of the other updates. Previously, accessing the option menu on a file or a folder, a user was presented with a long options list, including some pop-out chevrons for custom options. This summer 2023 update has regrouped the options and streamlined the menu by creating sub-menus. This allows for a smaller options window whilst adding some more functionality into the menu, such as viewing activity and locking files. Common options such as rename and make a copy are grouped at the top of the menu for speedy access. A new share subgroup contains the options to share, copy link, or begin an approval. The organize menu offers options to move, star, shortcut, add to a workspace, or in the case of folders, color code. File information gives access to detail and activity, and labels gives access to create or view labels whilst suggesting labels that are already in existence within the organization's drive ecosystem. For me, this change was a shock to the system to start. However, I am prone to list blindness and I found that once I got my head around the sub menus, they really helped me locate my options better in the menu and it definitely speeded me up. As far back as April, you may have noticed the new location picker in Google Drive when moving your files. Previously, moving a file, the pop-out showed the file in situ and users could move upwards in the file structure by navigating backwards or downwards in the file structure by navigating forwards. This could feel clunky and it gave little context for the file's current location globally. The move window was small and very often disappeared off the edge of the screen. In the new iteration, selecting move will open a full pop-out which is contained centrally in the window. The user is presented with suggested folders and can respond to suggestions to help Drive improve those suggestions. 
In one click, they can see starred folders or see all locations. For me, this is a big improvement as I can start at the top of the filing structure very quickly. Clicking on folders will move the user into the lower file structures. And as they travel, a breadcrumb trail starts to build along the bottom of the window, allowing the user to very quickly retrace steps if they take a wrong turn. At the top of the window, we can see which file we are moving and the current location. Clicking on the current location will also show a breadcrumb trail at the bottom of the window. This allows for smoother movement through the file structure. The April rollout may have slipped by you if you tend to move your files using the move icon in the file itself. However, from September, this move icon was also updated to the new location picker. It definitely took me some time to get used to this change. It was an imperfect function to start with. Initially, I find it very hard to acclimatize to the new picker, but now that I have had the opportunity to play with it and understand how it works, I do think this is a valuable function update. September also brought the lock function into the options menu for files. We've seen the lock function previously as a result of a completed approval process within Google Files. Now it is accessible from the file information section of the file options menu. Once selected and confirmed, a lock icon appears next to the file title in Google Drive. The existing quick functions and options menu are still available, but in each, the rename function is grayed out. The file can be unlocked again here from the options menu. Once in the document, you can see the function hides the toolbar, the insert, format and extension menus disappear, and the remaining menus are stripped of any edit functions. Comment history will open, but the comment function is disabled. A document can also be unlocked from inside the file. Please note with the lock function, a file can be unlocked by any editor. So if a co-author still has editor permissions, they can override a lock you have placed on the document. If you are trying to protect a document by limiting edits to a single or a small group of users, reducing other users to the lowest required permissions is still the best way to achieve this control. Also in locked mode, it is possible to make a copy of the document. So you may consider limiting the viewer commenter function to stop printing, downloading and copying. Most recently, Google Drive has had an updated interface. In the left-hand navigation, the font has reduced and the options are grouped. This has made space for two new menu options. Priority has been given its own standalone interface where you will find suggested files. Workplaces now has its own interface also with no change to the functionality you find there. And a new activity interface has been created, which gives the user an overview of activity across their files and allows them to quickly take action. Here we can see access requests with a manage access call to action. Clicking on the call to action opens an access pop-up showing the request or message and the level of permission requested. Users can adjust the permission level and can notify with a custom message before clicking share to complete the action. Approvals can be seen here with a review button to take the user into the approval. And we can also see comments on documents. Here, an assigned comment is indicated by the blue dot showing how many comments need to be addressed. And in each case, an open comment call to action takes the users to the document at the source of the comment to quickly review and respond. That's a taster of what's new in Drive for 2023. That's without looking at updates to mobile device users and some of the admin functionality which came online this year. Perhaps we'll take a look at that in another video, but until next week, see you then.